morning. Good morning. Good morning. One more level up. Good morning. Good morning. This is going to be an echo, but it'll go on for the rest of the afternoon. Okay. Uh, a warm welcome. A warm welcome to all who are joining our service on this bright May the 8th morning as we celebrate our mothers. Past present, and future. At the same time, let us not forget our reliance on Mother Earth in the past, present, and future. As we take this opportunity to acknowledge our relationship with this land. For thousands of years, First Nations people have walked on this land and their relationship with the land has been at the center of their lives and spirituality. We are gathered today on the traditional territory of the Mississaugas of the Credit, the Anishtabek, the Chippewa, the Haudenosaunee, and the Wendat peoples. This land is now home to many diverse First Nations, Inuit and Métis peoples, and it is important that we continue to acknowledge their stewardship of this land throughout the ages. Of special note this morning, the floral display. The floral display in the sanctuary this morning is from the Weir family. Janice Weir lives in England and annually sends decorations to honor loved ones, specifically Robert Weir, who is buried in our cemetery. Next week, we will be formally receiving eight new members into our congregation. We hope you get the opportunity to meet them and extend a warm Knox welcome. That's next week, May the 15th. On Sunday, May the 29th, uh, as we mark the retirement of two very valuable members of our staff, Linda Petridis and Tricia Cook. If you would like to make an add to the monetary gift that the congregation is putting together, um, your gifts should be placed in a separate envelope marked to the attention of Liz Lundy or directed to Knox by e-transfer and identified as for retirement gift. In the narthex this morning, the purple items um, were there. If you needed more information, please pick one up when you leave later on. And I turn it over to Mr. James McAllister. Thank you, Bob. Well, Doors Open Toronto 2022 is almost here. The in-person event takes place in less than three weeks. This is our chance to showcase our church and invite people from across the city to see Knox. Doors Open Toronto invites people to rediscover their city by celebrating more than 100 sites of architectural, cultural, and social significance. Knox is one of those sites. The city is offering tours, talks, and on online videos between 10 a.m. and 5 p.m. on Saturday and Sunday, May 28th and 29th. The city has put up its own website for the event and it includes lots of information about Knox. Our wonderful Knox website is linked to that city website. We are still in production of several videos, which we hope to make available to everyone who accesses the city's website and can be used by Knox both now and in the future. These are in addition to the in-person tours of the sanctuary, displays in the heritage room, and in-person in tours of the cemetery. We also anticipate some wonderful organ music from Ross on those days. But we have one more opportunity for you to take part in Doors Open Knox 2022. Next Sunday, May the 15th, we will be holding our final meeting of all the volunteers here in the sanctuary immediately after the conclusion of the service. So come along next Sunday and sign up as a tour guide or submit your name to perform another volunteer task. If you are unable to attend next Sunday, and have not already signed up to be a volunteer, just call me at 905-426-9623 
or call the church office and someone will get back to you. If you are unable to volunteer, please plan on coming to Doors Open Knox on May 28th or May 29th to learn more about your church and bring a friend. Thank you. The Bible begins with the clear message that is, let there be light. Even in the darkest time, even in the challenging moments of our lives, we go with that good news. Let there be light. Our God is with us today. As we celebrate the Christian Family Sunday, Mother's Day today, we are also reminded of the love of our mother or mother figure. May we extend that love with our church family as well. We are reminded of the mother's love today. Please join with me in the call to worship. We gather together to worship our loving, nurturing God who knows us intimately, loves us unconditionally, teaches us the way we should go, and comforts us in times of need. We come to worship God who loved us before we began to who knows us
Let us continue in the opening prayer, followed by the Lord's Prayer. We will sing the Lord's Prayer this morning. God, when you heard Peter say to the body, Tabitha, Dorcas, get up. Were you delighted with the faith, with the belief that in Christ, death is actually overcome? Do you will us to believe yet? To believe that almost one billion people can hunger no more, thirst no more, and every tear can be wiped away from their eyes? Help us to hear the call to life, to get up and serve as to be heard. Devoted to good works and acts of charity, and to live in the resurrection of hope that is both now and then. Amen. We continue in the assurance of God's grace. From today's reading, we know Tabitha Dorcas became ill and died. Yet they knelt down and prayed, saying, Tabitha, get up. Then she opened her eyes and sat up even when it looks as if it is the end of the story with god there is still life we often wonder if god is indeed on the sea is god on the sea with the increasing tensions and hateful speech around the world is god on the scene with personal issues that haunt our lives yet god still brings life we hear that message again Thanks be to God.
come and join me. Come and join Pastor Gray here at the front. <laughs> awesome. Hi, you and hi, Liam. Gwendolyn, hi, friends. Good morning. Wonderful. How are we feeling this morning? Pretty good? Good morning. Welcome. Come on. There's lots of room. Sean, can I just have you sit over here? Oh, we've got room? Yeah, we're good. We're good. Awesome. It's amazing how many can be held on these benches. <laughs> Well, friends, this morning for uh, our Christian Family Sunday and it's Mother's Day, I'm so glad we have flowers. And that's what I want us to look at today. Flowers are really a beautiful thing. What do we know about flowers? Why are flowers important, significant? Why did God create flowers? What do we know about flowers? They are colorful. Colorful! There's one. They're colorful. Awesome. Now, a lot of them, they actually, oh, they smell. There's often a nice fragrance. There's a nice smell for most flowers. Um, what else? Do they just smell and look colorful? Or do they? Yes. What else? They're very unique. Excellent word. Absolutely. Flowers are incredibly unique. What else? Anything else we know about flowers? Ewan, what do you think? Right? Do you know how small seeds are? Like super duper, like super tiny. And they grow into these amazing, amazing flowers. I mean, even the sunflower. The sunflower, I wish I had a real one here. And, well, if we had a real one, it might be like, it's, they're so tall. But from this super tiny seed, the flowers grow into these amazing flowers. You're right. Okay, so they come from a seed. They're colorful. They're unique. They smell. Anything else about flowers? Gwendolyn. Yes, nectar, honey, right? Absolutely. And that's really significant, isn't it? And we need, that's where the insects and the birds and the, they play a part too and they transfer things all over and they pass this nectar around. Huh, so cool. Anything else? We're getting there. There's even more about flowers. Beautiful. They're beautiful to look at, right? They're just beautiful to look at. You caught it. Do you ever, yes, you, and you got another one. Oh, so if somebody accidentally stepped on a flower, what, sh what should we do? Is that, is that where you're going with that? Yeah. Oh, oh, well, we hope we don't step on it, right? We don't want them to step on it. Yes, because they're very, you're right, they're very special. Medicine. Do you know that flowers have been used for medicine? And flowers are used for food, right? So flowers have, I mean, we could keep going here. There's lots of good reasons why we have plants, why we have flowers. Now, flowers, I like, and why we're kind of looking at that today, is they are something that we give on special occasions. And today is a special occasion where we honor our mother figures, right? Our mothers, our grandmothers, our stepmothers, our aunts, our uncles. Well, uncles? Wait. I was called Uncle Jane, so I get confused sometimes by my niece <laughs> way back when. <laughs> but we honor the women who are amazing figures in our lives. That's right, by flowers. And as our friend here said, because they're unique, and every mother figure in our life is unique and offers something special. And what I really like is that God, you know, gave us these beautiful flowers. And in the Bible, it talks about nature and plants and flowers and trees quite a bit. And just as much as plants are needed, we need each other. We need each other to grow and to flourish, to blossom. And we can learn so much from just the simple life of a simple flower, right? As Ewan said, you're right. Flowers grow from just a small, tiny seed. And they grow and they live their purpose. Sunflowers are amazing in what they give as well. And I love how they just, they grow and they lean right towards the sun. And they grow in such strength. And it's so appropriate that, you know, for Ukraine, that this is their flower, growing in strength. And we think of them, we think of all the mothers in Ukraine as well. And the flower lives for a purpose. And that's what God has given us flowers for, to enjoy their beauty, their color, their smell, to use their medicine, to have the food that flowers in nature provide. They have a purpose. Now, do flowers last very long? No. They don't, right? Oftentimes they're here for just a short time, but a significant time, a significant meaning. And that's something that God wants us to remember, right? Our life 
is very precious and unique and colorful and wonderful. And we can provide food and medicine and love to other people too, just like flowers give to us. And that's something that I think is really quite cool. But we have to take care of each other. Just as nature, we need to take care of these beautiful flowers for that little time that we get them. We only get each other for a little time too. And we need to take care of each other. So let's say a prayer, and today you're going to get to decorate your own really cool flower downstairs and make it your own unique gift. All right, let's say a prayer. Dear God, thank you for today. Thank you for the sunshine and the warmth. Thank you for our mothers, all mothers, all mother figures, for Mary and what she meant to you. We ask you to be with all of those who are missing their mothers today. We ask for your comfort and your love. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, friends, let's go. Good morning, morning. and happy Mother's Day. Today's scripture reading is from the New Testament, page 128, Books of Acts, chapter 9, verses 36 to 42. Now in Joppa, there was a disciple whose name was Tabitha, which in Greek is Dorcas. She was devoted to good works and acts of charity. At that time, she became ill and died. When they had washed her, they laid her in a room upstairs. Since Lydda was near Joppa, the disciples who heard Peter was sent there, or was there, sent two men to him with the request, please come to us without delay. So Peter got up and went with them, and when he arrived, they took him to the room upstairs. All the widows stood beside him, weeping and showing tunics and other clothing that Dorcas had made while she was with them. Peter put out, put all of them outside, and then he knelt down and prayed. He turned to the body and said, Tabitha, get up. Then she opened her eyes, and seeing Peter, she sat up. He gave her his hand and helped her up. Then calling the saints and widows, he showed her to be alive. This became known throughout Joppa, and many believed in the Lord. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. Thanks Thanks be to God.
I heard about this hillbilly family. They, they were living really far away from a very remote area. One time they visited the largest city. They checked into a five-star hotel for the first time ever. And they stood amazed at this elevator. Had no idea what that was about. About the time an elderly lady walked toward the elevator, the door closed. A minute later, the door opened, and out came a beautiful young woman. The father couldn't stop staring at it. Without turning his head, he patted his son and said, Son, go get your mother. <laughs> Happy Mother's Day. The Book of Acts, we just heard from Angela, the Book of Acts as a whole describes how the movement, the movement bearing Jesus' name spread out from Jerusalem to the whole wide world. It is a transitional book from the gospel to the gospel to the entire world especially by two individuals, Paul and Peter. Chapter 9 through chapter 11, we see particularly Peter. We see his name quite often in those chapters, Book of Acts. Peter heals a paralyzed man, the Bible records, the paralyzed and bedridden person for eight years, as similar as Jesus healed a paralyzed person a while ago. You remember the paralyzed man and the friends, they went through the roof and Jesus saw their faith and said, your faith has made you well. In a way, this story, Peter healing a paralyzed man, is quite similar to that account, Jesus' story. Now in the Bible we call Joppa, there is this lady who has been devoted to good works and acts of charity. Somehow she became ill and died. Her name, the Bible records, Tabitha, which in Greek is Dorcas. So Tabitha and Dorcas were talking about the same person. And they laid their body in a room upstairs, 
and they heard that Peter was passing, passing by there. So they asked Peter to please come to us without delay. Peter told everyone out. He knelt down and prayed. He turned to the body and said, Tabitha, get up. Now, if you are like me, you may wonder why this story is here. Why it is important for the writer to write down the story. There are some passages in the Bible that if you read them too quickly, then you miss the deeper message that may be there if you get the details. Have you ever thought or have you ever said to yourself, it's familiar. Doesn't this story, isn't this story familiar? Does this story sound like anything I've heard before? Have I been here before? I'm not talking about hockey. I hope that our cheer from Go Leaps Go doesn't go to Please Leaps Please. <laughs> there are clear parallels between a little girl's dad, Jesus healed a little girl a while ago, and that story here in Book of Acts. I'm talking about Mark's Gospel, chapter 5, and Book of Acts, chapter 9. Because, you remember, remember if you were in Sunday school, when Jesus healed that little girl, what did Jesus say to that little girl? It's very quiet when minister asks questions. <laughs> Jesus says to that little girl, Talita Kumi. Talita Kum or Talita Kumi. And here we see or hear similar phrase. Peter says, Tapita Kumi or Tapita Kum. There must be clear or some kind of similarities there. Both individuals are already dead and people are already weeping. And Jesus told everyone to get outside and Peter told everyone to get outside. And Jesus knelt, Peter knelt, they both prayed saying, get up. We see here the threads of connection between what Jesus did in the past and what Peter is doing now. The fundamental message we can catch here is that what God did in the past, God can still do it today. Even situations that may be hopeless, even in a situation where, where people say, look, that's the way it's going to be. We can't expect anything else when we are tempted to settle down, when we are tempted to see this is the way it's going to be forever, God still says, Tapita Kumi, Tapita Kumi, get up. Tapita is an Aramaic name, Jesus' mother tongue. Aramaic, and Dorcas is Greek name. Both mean a gazelle, like an animal. What comes to your mind when you think of the word gazelle? Like, like grace, like beautiful animal, gazelle. This story of Peter raising Tavita is quite similar to the story of Jesus raising the dead girl, saying, Talida kum, Talida kumi from Mark's Gospel. If you choose to do, see that way. It begins with Joppa, the primary port city for Jerusalem, 
the Bible records, particularly the Bible says Joppa. Does that name sound familiar to anyone? Joppa? It's Mother's Day, so let me ask mothers to shout out the answer. Anything comes to your mind when you hear the word Joppa? I'm not talking about the Star Wars, Joppa the Hutt, no, Joppa. It's the exact same city that the reluctant prophet Jonah, right? Jonah. Jonah fled to Tarshish when God said, go to Nineveh, your enemy city. What a coincidence. Tapita Kum, Joppa, or is not? In the next chapter, chapter 10, Peter then is commissioned from this city, Joppa, to a Gentile Roman soldier, Cornelius, as if this is just a coincidence. And we know from Matthew 16, 17 that Peter's Aramaic name, Peter's Aramaic name is recorded as Simon Bar, son of Simon Bar Jonah. So, is this a coincidence? Jonah's God is Peter's God too. Now it may make sense why Peter became the first apostle to the non-Jewish people if you see Peter as Jonah. Tavida was highly regarded Christian in her community, the Bible records. You may think uh, she was a disciple in Joppa. This is the only place in the Bible, the entire Bible, the entire Bible you can see, this is the only place where the feminine form of the Greek word disciple was dedicated for one single individual, Tavita, Dorcas, Martyria in Greek language. The Bible records Dorcas as a disciple. When you consider the nature of relationship between men and women in the first century and how unequal it was, the people of that community is actually exercising the opposite way of the culture. That's the way it should be always. No, no. Think about it. A common fisherman like Peter is preaching in a church to the religious authorities. A penalized man got up and was walking around. And a woman named the Gazelle in the culture is leading the best social outreach program. How radical that is. Verse 39, when they lay the body on the room upstairs, it says, all the widows stood beside him, weeping and showing tunics, clothing that Dorcas had made. So what am I saying with the name Dorcas in this Mother's Day? We as a church have delivered food and prayer shows to many people in and beyond our faith community. But often I learned that the ladies, the people who contributed their time and energy, who have made bread and soups, they also have their own challenges, medical issues. They are the ones who has called Peter in here, believing that Dorcas can be resurrected by the faith. If you attended the church a long time enough, you'll probably realize that it's hard, to, it's hard for a faith community to lose a key leader. Picture this. These people of faith have just lost their leader, Dorcas. 
And as Peter enters in, they weep and show the tunics and clothing Dorcas made. Not a single word, but they were just crying. And Peter, Peter just knelt down and prays. They were not saying, this is the way it's going to be. No. They all, they all stepping out in faith. Peter put all of them outside and they, he knelt down and prayed. In kneeling, Peter is tapping into the power that heal the little girl, like Jesus said, Talida Kumi, the power that saved the lives of the poor like Dorcas did. Tavida, get up. Like Talida, get up. Talida means little girl. Have I seen this before? Am I walking the same path like somebody before me has been walking? Have you ever experienced that kind of feeling? I think someone has, has walked this path and I am walking the same path. The final verse of the passage may look like just a trivial, unimportant passage. Verse 43, Peter stayed in Joppa for some time with a certain Simon, a tanner. This Simon was seen as an outcast, but because he was a tanner, he deals with animal skin, which was seen as dirty job. But this Jewish leader, Peter, is dealing with, hanging out with tanner. The entire story in the next book of Acts, they are practicing, they are going the opposite way of the social norm, social tradition. The following is a list of cards you will never see at Hallmark store. Listen to this. I've always wanted to have someone to hold, someone to love. After having met you, I have changed my mind. <laughs> you look great for your age, almost lifelike. I'm so miserable without you, it's almost like you are here. Every once in a while, we send greeting card to let our friends and family and our mother or our mother figure to know that we care about them. One of the greeting cards Paul, the apostle, sent, the New Testament records, is that wonderful piece I always treasure in my life. Paul sent a card to his beloved friends, Timothy, from a faraway foreign land. The card goes like this. Listen to this. To Timothy. I thank my God upon every remembrance of you. Always with prayer of mine, making requests for you with all joy. I see the faith that I saw in your grandmother Eunice in your mother. I see the same faith that I saw from your mother in your face. I see the faith that I saw from your grandmother and your mother. Now I see that faith in you. Mother's love is one of the greatest love a human being can experience. Little do we know is that love can be sent to our next generation. It's my prayer that someone can see my mother's faith in me. It's my prayer that everyone we interact can see your mother's face 
in you. I see the faith that I saw from your grandmother, from your mother. Now I see that in you. Amen. Jesus has commanded, love one another as I have loved you. May we love each other. May we love our mother or our mother figure. May we love our family. Now today's offering is received.
God still calls us out into the world to be a disciple like Dorcas, serving God and all God's people with love and kindness in our present. And the promise is this, no matter where we go, Jesus, the Good Shepherd, will lead us to streams of life-giving water, and God will wipe all tears from our eyes. Amen. Please join with me in the call to worship. O God of Talitha, O God of Tabitha, we gather in your presence to give you thanks and to celebrate the gift of your motherly love, both gentle and fierce, both strong and humble, both kind and true. Your love has given birth to the whole of creation, supports and nurtures us, carries us out to correct us, and challenges us in ways that strengthen and transform us. We offer you praise and thanksgiving for your unfailing presence in our lives and all of the blessings you so generously offer us. Loving God, We give thanks for mothers the world over. We celebrate all those who have nurtured and cared for us. Remembering especially birth mothers, adopted mothers, surrogate mothers, parents, grandmothers, teachers, neighbors, and all of them. O God of generations, thank you for the gift of faith, 
kindled and rekindled in us through the years. And thank you for those who have taught us the faith in sincerity and love. Today, we give special thanks and praise for our church mothers, the women who study and without much recognition teach a new generation of children about the love of Jesus. And we celebrate the matriarchs who build up with compassion and strong shoulders young women and girls, revealing a deep spiritual life and love woven into the fabric of our church family. We stand in solidarity with all mothers for the seen and unseen grief and struggles of women and mothers. We ache with you. For the seen and unseen joys of mothers, we rejoice in solidarity with you. May God bless all women on this special day. In the name of our God, the mother of us all. Tabita, get up. Tabita, kumi. All the followers, the disciples, all the widows, they heard the voice. When they heard the voice of Peter, they heard God's voice. Tabita, kumi. May we say the same thing to the people around us. May the grace of Lord Jesus Christ, love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all.